How are ya? Another video for today. Um, I've had a request for some down picking, which is a, a good video idea. So I know it sounds simple, but overlooked. One of those techniques that you just go, you just pick down and that's it. But there's a bit more to that. Uh, so let's have a look. Main thing when you down pick, um, pretty much I'll say this with everything too, is making sure you're using efficiency of motion. You don't want to be locking in that right arm or picking hand. You don't want to be just hammering through it without using the wrist. It's just too hard. You can't sustain it. Um, and also too, you end up lacking control to be able to accent and use dynamics on that hand too, which is really important. So I'll try and keep this one as short as possible and ramble on. Not ramble on, so I almost caught myself out there. <laughs> um, focus on efficiency of motion, bit of accenting, bit of control, and just some ways to develop speed, yes, control, but also um, dynamic range and articulation is really important. So I'm gonna get a metronome going here. Let's just say, uh, let's go 90 beats per minute, pretty slow but we're gonna speed up our division, right? Start with crotchets, pretty steady. Just on that top string. Quavers. Triplets. Semi-quavers. Quavers. Going random now, yeah? Triplets. Crotches. So I know that seems simple, but being able to change from subdivisions like that um, at a steady tempo is a really, really important tool. It's like the crux of the technique, right? Because you'll get those different variations where you might down picking fast and then rhythm stop or whatever. So being able to do that is super important. Keep your metronome slow. Make sure you can at least go crotchets, quavers, triplets, semis, and then speed up the click only by five, 10 beats per minute, pretty slow. Keep it steady. Now, looking at the actual technique itself, right? Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. What you wanna try and do is a great little tool is see if you can do your downstroke on that top string, but don't actually push your pick through the string. Just rest. It's gonna make a weird sound. Almost like a scratch. It's like a semi mute, yeah? So you can see there, all I'm doing is just letting that pick touch that string. Because when I go any further through, generally that's where people start using too much arm and too much weight, uh, too much force, all one and the same, right? So just letting the hand drop and feeling it touch that string. I should be able to do that forever. Even got pretty quick there. Making tiny sounds, still using the wrist, but it's just dropping and just touching that string. It's a really weird technique. It feels strange, but super useful. Now, from there, I should just be adding just that tiny little bit more gravity, just letting the pick fall through to get that fundamental note. So here's the scratch. There's the fundamental note. See if you can go back and forth, right? Keep it steady. Maybe quavers, one and two and three and four and. Now, okay, ready? My hand shouldn't look any different from when I'm doing the touch to the playthrough. Speeding up. Now, when I'm doing that, I'm muting that pretty heavily just so you get a nice fun little note. I'll just go over for a second. It's all wrist, I'm not. That's arm, that's wrist. You can see it's moving from that motion. Keep it small, keep it just little movements out. Yeah? One thing that can help too is pick slanting. You don't want to be perpendicular to the string or flat picking is a better word for that. My pick shouldn't be there, it should be rolled over a little bit to allow that to push through. If it's too flat, as the name suggests, it's gonna get caught on that string and that's when you'll start having to use more force to actually pick through the string. So try and avoid that at all costs if possible. Uh, yeah, very good. So from there, obviously that's one thing to cover. You've obviously got to worry about accuracy on that right hand if you're changing strings, which is what we're going to do in a second, and also adding some left hand too, just some simple ideas. Like I said, I'll try and keep it mostly on the uh, right hand focus today anyways. So, all right, let's go into the right hand, but we'll talk about accuracy, okay? So first off, you want to make sure you can accent. So if we accent our one bit, of every group, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Just do a little bit of gentle palm muting here too. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. I'm over exaggerating that a little bit just so you can hear that. Keep 
Can you change beats? So can you go to the accent on beat two? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Three, one, two, three, four, one, 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 three, four, and on four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. These are old uh, classical techniques you do for tremolo practice, but can apply through picking techniques, just one and the same, it's all good. So from there, let's move that accent, right? Same beat, but we're gonna move it to, say, the A string. We'll just play the exact same note. So if I play the seventh fret on the A string, I'm gonna get the same pitch as my open E string. I'm actually down a full steps. So this is D for me, but I'll just talk standard. So if that's an E, that's an E as well. So our one, all down strokes, is now gonna be on the A string. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. On beat two, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two
sounds a little bit weird, it's a bit off time. See I'm dropping it and letting it come forward a little bit. Now, that's down picking in a nutshell, but what you've really got to consider too is a lot of the time your down picking is combined with little bursts of alternate picking or little gallops or whatever, right? So being able to blend the two techniques and have the flexibility to go back and forth from downs to alternates and so forth, that's probably even more important than down picking itself, having that control to move. But you gotta make sure you have your down picking technique solid and your alternate pick, like picking technique solid too, and then being able to combine them together. That's uh, where you kinda of wanna to aim towards just going back and forth with some fluency and efficiency. So let's try this, let's get a basic pattern going. Let's do this. Let's maybe do quavers, one and two and. So one and two and three and up, four and one and two and. Now I'm trying to use the gallop, the wrist twos, I'm going slowly. One and two and three and up, four and two. Same thing, I'm not putting too much weight or too much force into those downstrokes or the gallop for that matter, I'm trying to keep it steady. So let's go to a tempo. So at the moment our gallop's on the three. Let's mix it up, let's put on the one, yeah? One, two, three, four. Put on the four. Double it up, put it on one and two. And same thing, once you get out at a certain speed, then start to bump the metronome up slowly, like five, 10 beats per minute, not very much, just little increments. Um, being able to swirl speed too, as an uh, electric guitarist, especially in the metal world, I don't think this is practice enough, it's very to a click, but being able to play rubato and having the control to go slow to fast, fast to slow, wave-like motion so you can't actually tell. Here's the difference, right? You'll be able to tell where I change speed here. If I go. Like you could hear the point where you're like, okay, that's faster. But if you do it like a wave-like motion, a bit of accelerando, start slow. no exact point in time I went from slow to fast, fast probably back to medium there. There was no point in time you were like, oh yeah, that's the note, or well, that's the beat that he changed the speed on. I'm trying to just gradually do it over time. That's a really important tool to um, to have as well. Man, this video is 13 minutes already, I knew I'd ramble on. Anyways, let's keep rolling. So, last thing on that down picking stuff as well, is you want to make sure that when you're doing the downstrokes, you can have stamina to do it for a while. If you can do it for 10 minutes and you can do it for 30 seconds, you know what I mean? So being able to overcompensate for your downstrokes, really important tool. And the last thing I'll say too, on the actual pick angle itself, like I said, pick slanting, make sure that your pick is sliding through the string on a ramp like motion. Make sure it's not cutting the string at like a 90 degree angle. Like if your string's going that way, you don't want your pick to be hitting it straight on. You want it to be on an angle so it ramps off. Um, this preference, I know some people like to angle their pick forward towards the neck, some people like towards the bridge, whatever. Don't change your pick positioning just for the technique, but just make sure when you do it, you're getting that nice gentle motion. And that goes right back to the first tool that I said, just being able to tap the string. And then when you want to go through, it shouldn't really feel any different. Just that little bit more weight, a little bit more gravity. You're not trying to force the pick through the string, you're trying to let it slide through. So yeah, is there anything else I need to say about down picking? Not really. I mean, if you sum it up, gentle technique from the wrist, make sure you can do it for a while, practice to a click, make sure you can blend that with alternate picking or gallops or whatever, um, and make sure, probably the biggest thing that's missed is make sure you've got dynamic range, yeah? Make sure you can accent wherever you want. Um, that really has a massive impact when you're riffing. If you're accenting off the beat or accenting on the beat or no accenting at all, it'll, those three will sound so different from each other. Um, in the context of the song against drums and bass and stuff as well. So yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, there's nothing else really that I need to cover on that one, but just practice to a click, make sure you can do your open string, 
Probably the last thing too, make sure you can practice on chord shapes as well. When you do power chords and you do down strokes, you've got a little bit more ground to cover. You've got more than one string to hit. So your wrist is gonna be a little bit more flexy. To make sure you hit those strings all the time. I hear it all the time where people will go, first one, the accent will be on all three strings, but then all the rest will just be on the top of you like a... But if you're trying to hit all three, left jump. Make sure that your wrist is flowing, but again, the wrist is flowing, not arm flowing. So yeah, hopefully this helps. Um, hopefully that request is served. If you have any questions or other requests, chuck them down in the comments and I'll get to them when I can. But uh, yeah, from there, give us a like, comment, subscribe, it all helps. And uh, I'll see you guys next session. Cheers, have a good one.